backed by gold. So it, it just makes sense to me. Um, RD Pill 17, what type of silver can we buy and is it easy to sell or buy? Yeah, it's um. so the silver that Amanda just held up, the 90% oh, here, silver half again. dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always have those. Okay. Yeah. And um, so yesterday I saw that we shipped out so much of it, but we had some people that sold back to us. So mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, we constantly have turnover on that. We would never say no to a purchase of any type of gold or silver that you bought from us. Even um, we have people that have bought gold and silver from other companies out there that aren't current current clients of ours, and we will buy that silver too. The as long as it's a coin or a bar, we'll, we'll yeah. always buy back. Okay, the person with the IRA, remember, is Kim Winters. Oh yes. Okay. okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else here. It's quite funny, Andrew. We're having an invasion of ladybugs at our house right now. And I keep trying to catch them and throw them outside and they're flying all around the office. So you guys might see one just zoom by <laughs> and we've been trying to catch them and put them out. Okay. Uh, Marianne Hefner, when gold and silver goes up, do you sell it for currency? Will it go down or stay up? Where do you go to cash it in? Oh, these, Andrew can answer all this. Oh, yeah. You, you uh -huh. can sell that back to us. It's, um, it's better to sell it um, to whoever you bought it from because... If you go into these places that say cash for gold, um, they'll try to take advantage of you. Oh, yes. Like, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like um, just for fun, I wanted to see what would happen. So I took some gold bars into a place and um, and asked them what um, um, how much that they would pay for the gold bars. They offered exactly one hundred fifty dollars under the, the one ounce price of gold. Mm -hmm. and, and I just I only went in there so that I could have the example that I'm giving to the people now. It was only for that reason. But if you. Um, we just bought back a bunch of old gold bars, um, not the best looking ones and not ones that we sold to the client. And we bought them for the full spot price of gold. And um, and we'll do that. So it's like it's better to go through someone that you know of some like for, for us. Um, we've worked with Amanda here at Arca Grace for like three years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're vouched for by so many people that are yes. Arca of Grace listeners. So we would be a good place to start. There's other good people out there, but you just kind of have to roll the dice if you try them. Now, yeah, what we put your information up, Andrew, and what you could do is you can call, uh, you could fill out the form on their website, you can say uh, you saw him on Manda Grace or Ark of Grace. Uh, and what's wonderful about Andrew is he, based on your needs, he matches you with his one of his um, one of the people who works for him. So basically based on your needs is how he's going to match you. He's just not going to put you with just anybody. He's going to put you with somebody that is going to be a really good match for what you need. Exactly. And one thing I love about the Ark of Grace listeners is that um, Amanda always puts up my email address and um, and none of, none of the other partners that we work with do that. And I don't know why, and I, I don't know why I've not asked them to, but the people at Ark of Grace will will write these these um, nice emails stating specifically what they're looking to accomplish. And sometimes they don't know, but the way they say it really helps me get them to the right person. So I've had people on there say things like, I've got an annuity and the annuity is worth um, $50,000. And if I cash it out uh, now, I'm wondering, will I take like a 5% hit on it? Mm -hmm. And if I did, would that be worth it in your opinion? And those are the type of things we want to know if we're up against, because um, I've got a retired financial advisor here that specialized in annuities, and I would definitely pair you up with that person. Mm -hmm. If you're only interested in learning more about precious metals IRAs or 401ks, then let us know, because I've got I've got a team of four people here that are the absolute best. Like, like these people are the best. They can tell you quickly whether it can be done or what you would need to get it done. And uh, the more specific you can be, the best that we can help you. Exactly. Uh, Rhea McDowell, Andrew, what is your opinion on countries with massive gold slash silver reserves going asset backed? Who will soon be reevaluating their currencies? And then she said, i.e. Iraq. Yeah, the Iraqi dinar. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people out there have invested in the Iraqi dinar. I'm hoping to really it will moonshot and that they would make a lot of money on it. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think that um, that all of us are going to have to go to a gold backed uh, central bank digital currency. We have to. It's these fiat currencies have been circulating for way too long, not just here, but 
in China, Russia, and all the other big nations out there. It's it's about time we go to something that's gold backed. And mm -hmm. um, at that point, you're going to want to own what it's based on, which is gold. Yeah. I mean, I really think gold's going to skyrocket. And what's good for gold is great for silver. Well, especially if if more um, you, you, people, you know, in other nations as well. And I don't know how many nations have done this so far, but go to these gold backed digital currencies. Gold is going to become more valuable yes. in a way. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, Cindy Harding, how, how much gold can I get for 5,000? Maybe we should tell her how much gold and how many, how much silver she could get. Yeah. So with the, uh, with the gold, um, the coin that Amanda held up there, um, you wouldn't even be able to get two of those for that. So what, what I would recommend is that we go with a smaller denomination. So there's these um, back um, in like the 30s and 40s in Europe, mm -hmm. they had like a, a Swiss 20 franc or a French 20 franc. Yeah. Basically like a $20 bill. Uh -huh. And those, those have about a fifth of an ounce of gold in them. And, um, and if you fill out the online form, what we would do is we would tell you how many of those that you can get for the 5,000. Mm -hmm. And in a way, having the, the smaller denomination will be better for you because let's say that uh, gold goes at 10,000 an ounce and Amanda has that uh, $20 gold piece there will be worth a little bit more than 10,000 if the gold in it is worth 10,000 alone. Well, so let's say that you want to barter with your neighbor for something. You need to buy a hundred dollars worth of goods from your neighbor. Yeah. Well, how would, you can't really get change from it because that's a big hunk that's worth like $10,000. So having smaller denominations in gold could help you. But in my opinion, for Tammy K, I would, or, or not the previous person, what I would say is um, is um, stay away from the gold and go with silver because you can get a whole lot of silver for that. So $5,000 is going to get you, um, it's going to get you almost a, like $6,000 would get you about a thousand of the quarters that someone asked about. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so, yeah. So maybe about $500 of those, I mean, 500 of those. So it'd be better to have the small denominations and silver would get you um, better bang for your buck. And she's also asking, she said, Tammy Kay, I know there is a fee involved in moving an IRA to silver. How small of an IRA would you suggest make sense to move? Oh yeah. So sometimes uh, people will, will fill out the web submission and they'd say, Hey, um, I've got an IRA with $3,000 in it. And should I roll that over? Well, the fees are this. Um, it costs $100 to maintain the storage account, the storage account that you have at the storage facility that your gold and silver will be stored at. So it's $100 a year. Then it costs $125 to um, per year to maintain the account with a $50 setup fee. Mm -hmm. so, so right at the onset, that's about $275 in fees when it's $3,000. So to me, it probably wouldn't be worth it. So I would put that threshold at say ten thousand dollars minimum. Mm -hmm. um, it's there are people here that will do it if it's less. I mean, if if you really want to, we'll do it. We have some people that have had multiple IRAs, maybe one for one hundred fifty thousand, one for fifty thousand, and one yeah. for like five thousand. We've done all three, but those are all going to incur. Um, if one's a Roth and one's a traditional. You're going to have a fee for the Roth and a fee for the traditional. If yes. you have three traditional IRAs, you can lump them all together. Um, and we're, we're going to go back to that in a second after this question. But uh, KRJ56, what about Kennedy half dollar pieces? Because this person has several. Oh, yeah. If you have them and they're dated 1964 and mm -hmm. before, then they're worth the same amount as the Ben Franklin half dollar that Amanda always holds up. So oh, yes. Here. Yeah. I yeah, if they're 1965 or after, then they're not 90% silver. Um, from 1965 to 1969, they made 40% silver coins. Those, so you, those are valuable too. But anything 1970 or after, you might as well just spend it at the market. Okay, Anne Plagenborg, 5667. Uh, can a 401k be rolled over? It's, today we're getting the best questions. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, um, most of the time a 401k can be rolled over. Let's say that uh, you work at Target and Target offers you a 401k and yeah. you still work there. Um, chances are you you might not be able to move that one over into a gold yeah. and silver IRA. You would just um, ask your, um, your human resources department and, and just find out if it's possible. But if you no longer work at the firm that the 401k was originated at, then absolutely 
100% of the time you can roll it over. Okay, Mopar is asking, Andrew, do you have a minimum purchase for silver? Yes, the minimum is $2,000. And, and why uh, is that, Andrew? Because the um, uh, we use a third-party shipper, which is usually our one of our depositories. We have one in Texas and one in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a $2,000 minimum. And yeah. um, so for people that want to do like a $500 or a $1,000 purchase, what we found worked successfully for them is that they find friends or family members that can go in with them. And we've had many of them come back and buy multiple times. So that would be a good way. Um, group it with other friends or family to meet the minimum. That's a good idea. Um, Kathleen Smith, McLernan. Hi, Andrew. Ordered my silver order with Chris and received it in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to meeting you in Detroit. Oh, yes, I will be there. And definitely, I know you probably have my cell phone number. If not, it's in the, um, um, when you made your purchase and you received the invoice, there's a little note in the invoice that has my cell phone number. Text me and I will come out and say hi. And I know that um, you've done a couple of purchases. So thank you for your support. We, we certainly- Thank you, yes. It. We appreciate it very much. Julie Abraham Newton, question. I have the big silvers for years. Are they worth anything now? Been saving since I was a little girl. Oh, the, if, if they're the old um, silver dollars, and if they're dated uh, 1921 or older, those are great. Those They're worth um, $30, $40 each on the low end. And there could even be some rare dates in there. Um, that's one of the, those are one of the items that we actually sell a lot of here are the old Morgan silver dollars and peace mm -hmm. silver dollars. They're really great. The Morgan dollars are dated from 1800s to early 1900s. It's an excellent investment. Cheryl Bethany. Hi, Amanda and Andrew. Is it wise to cash in two of, of $5 gold and hold on to the rest? Do you believe it will go higher in 2024? Thank you. Oh, God bless. I think it's going to keep going higher. It's um, I, I wouldn't sell any of my gold unless I, I had an emergency. And for mm -hmm. anyone out there, if you if you had an immediate need where you needed to pull funds from somewhere to meet that need, then you have to do what you have to do. But if, if you're um, if you're better off financially and you're thinking hey i might want to sell my gold because it's up and and sell it for like green greenback dollars yeah i'd rather have my gold than the dollars okay denise gadboy martin andrew is there any way you can use multiple depositories i.e strata in texas it would be nice to store our gold slash silver at both sites delaware and texas um so for us um we always use Delaware and only Delaware for our new clients that set up um, um, precious metals IRAs. But if you have a precious metals IRA that you set up an account with, with another company, and and if you set it up at a, t a depository in Texas, for example, yeah, and, and you don't plan to drop that one, then let us know because we can ship the product directly there. It's just um, there's an advantage to you using our depository. And, and I'll tell you what that is. The bulk of our inventory here at Beverly Hills Precious Metals is stored at the Delaware Depository. Mm -hmm. So, so if if you had silver, a whole lot of it in Texas at a depository there that you wanted to sell to us, we would have to offer you a little bit less than what we normally would to uh, accommodate for the shipping costs from Texas to Delaware. But if you were at Delaware and you wanted to sell it back to us. We don't have to we don't have to make any accommodation as far as shipping because mm -hmm. it's just a paper transfer from your account at, at the same location to uh, to our account at the same location okay so it's, it's better for all yes uh sharon bloodsoe sellers hi there so happy to see you i need a financial advisor but i'm long distance banking do you have any suggestions um, I can, um, if you send us a, a note on the website on bh-pm.com yep. and um, I'll, I see all of them, I'm the one that reads all of them and figure out um, where they need to go. And uh, if you do that, I will get you to the right place. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see here. Um, because I've got people asking a lot of similar things here. Um, and uh let me see. Let me go down here and ask. Um, maybe in the meantime, Andrew. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I found something interesting. Karen Smith uh, Smith is asking, what do we do if our annuity is locked in for four more years? Okay. 
And that's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. for, for that one, you should go back to where you got the annuity at and find out um, how much the penalty is. If the penalty for getting out of it early is, is something that you're comfortable with, then um, talk with your family, pray about it if you need to, and, um, and then make the decision there. But definitely find out first. Um, we had a situation where we had a client um, last year yeah. that, um, that had cashed one out. And um, her, I, I think the penalty was something like $21,000. It was, wow. a, it was a big annuity and it okay. was a big penalty. And um, she hadn't discussed with anybody what the penalty was. And um, and we had to work really hard to, to reverse that and, and get it back to her. I mean, we, in good faith, we could never allow somebody to, to start this investment with us with taking that kind of a hit. But she never asked what it was. She just said, I don't care what the penalty is, just do this. And then she found out what it was and she couldn't believe it. And it was just a, so she had to, she just had to reverse everything. And we don't want to have to put people in that position. Uh, Jenny Witt is asking, can you buy with cash or debit? We can't do the debit, but um, you can um, buy with cash. Um, it would require you, um, once you reach out to us and, and if there's a, a purchase order, I mean, an invoice sent to you, you could um, take that and go deposit it into our bank account. Okay. Jonathan, um, how soon do you think we are heading into a cashless society completely and how much of collecting gold and silver will through these, uh, those times? I think it's going to take about a decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that sounds like we've got a lot of free time. I mean, a lot of time to do this, but it's going to take some time. And here's where I get that from. So in 1933, that's when uh, President, uh, um, President Roosevelt, FDR, took a, he, he actually outlawed having the coins like the one Amanda has there. Yeah. So, so um, he recalled all the gold. He said, Oh, this he, one. Yeah. He said, you can keep a hundred dollars face value yeah. of, that, of that gold. Anything above a hundred dollars, you have to go to the bank and you have to exchange that for paper currency. And, and that took some time. And eventually gold was no longer circulating in, in as like as coinage. But up until that point, it was. Mm -hmm. And, and for, for people like us, uh, me and you, Amanda, our whole lives, we've, we've paid for things with cash. We're used to yes. pulling out the bills. I mean, it is somewhat convenient now if you can use like Apple Pay or Venmo or you know, pay your bills online on your phone or your computer. But we are moving to, um, to, to where we will be cashless. Even, um, even a, a family member here, we, she wanted to go and buy a boba drink. And, um, and I said, fine, I'll pull over and you run inside. Um, um, do you, will you take my credit card or do you want to take cash? She said, give me the card. Like she's, um, she's 14 years old and it's like, um, you, they don't want to use cash. They don't want to touch the dirty coins or the dirty cash. Just use your card. And, um, and I think we're going to be using our phones. So I think cash is almost done. Okay. That, that's it. There's a question here that, um, that is going to follow that up in a minute, but I want to ask this question first. Um, they're asking if Canadians can purchase from you. Um, there's only one scenario where they can. Um, okay. Try not to get all too involved in the customs issues. So, so we don't physically ship to Canada, but um, a lot of the people in Canada do have addresses that they can receive shipments at here in the United States, or maybe even have family here in the U S yeah. and um, so we can do that. Or you can set up a storage account at Delaware depository and um, a Canadian can set up an account there and you could have physical gold and silver in Delaware in the U S. Okay. Ray King. I am stocked up with silver from BH-PM, but I have a different question. What happens to our stash of cash if everything goes digital? Do you know if they uh, trade it or they ask you to bring it in or what What, what happens? I think they are going to ask you to bring it in. Even oh, two boy. weeks ago. Yeah. So two weeks ago, Australia had this um, something called cash day. People out there can Google it. So Australia is having the same thing where they're going cashless and the uh -huh. people that don't want to go cash this, um, they said, okay, here's what we're going to do for this whole day. Everybody out there, go take your ATM card, go to the ATM, pull out cash and, and spend that cash at different stores and circulate cash. Prove to the government that cash is something that we still need. Okay. And, um, 
And I, at first I was thinking, okay, that's really interesting. But then I was thinking, what, what if it's the government that set up that whole thing and that's how they're drawing the cash back in? And, and there are people that are worried. I've got a guy in, um, in uh, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, that, um, that has like a half million dollars in, in hundred dollar bills. And um, every time I go out there to see our friend, um, we always, um, I always stop by and I come back with some of that cash because he, he realizes that at some point that cash has to be recalled. It's gonna have to be turned in in exchange for, for digits on your phone. So I do believe it will be recalled. Interesting. Uh, Marshall is asking, how would I convert my 401k? Oh, you'd start by calling Andrew. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, go, go on bh-pm.com and uh, say that Amanda sent you, fill out the entire form, and in the notes section, state exactly that. How can I roll over my 401k? I'll get you to our IRA department, and uh, they'll ask you if you still work at the firm that it was originated at. If, if you do, you still might be able to roll it over. But if you no longer work there, then it's really simple and they'll walk you through the process. Okay. Um, Zog is asking, is there a difference between silver coins and silver bars investment wise? There is. So, uh, so um, silver bars are going to cost less ounce per ounce than the silver coins. So uh, if the silver coins cost more, the benefit for the silver coins is that those are non-reportable and the bars are reportable. Mm -hmm. So if you walked into your um, local brick and mortar, um, um, say uh, cash for gold place and wanted to sell the silver bars or gold, small gold bars or gold um, Kruger ends, they're gonna ask you to fill out a tax form. They're gonna ask for your social and they'll send you a 1099 that, during the next uh, tax period. If you have the coins like the half dollar that Amanda held up and you sell those, those are semi-collectible. It makes them non-reportable and there's no 1099 cent. Okay. Yep. I have this one too. This is the goal, but this is a different story. Um, yep. Okay. Here is a question. Can a 401k be rolled over like an IRA for gold or silver? Absolutely. And, um, and you should do it as soon as possible because it, you're probably holding stocks and yes. the stocks have done well for so long. But uh, they're, they're I don't trust the stock market right now. I'll be yeah. very honest with you. I don't. Um, I think the stock market can get, um, you know, a little wobbly on its legs uh, in this time. And so, yes, it is. It is good to diversify. I always equate it to a table and you have legs on a table. So if one of if you have four legs on a table, right, and one of those legs gets knocked out, you have three other legs to now help bear the weight of that table and keep it up. So this is why it is important to diversify right now and not put all your eggs in one basket because you'll have a lot of cracked uh, cracked eggs and spilled yolks all over the place if that basket falls. Now this is why it's important to have gold and silver, to have some of your 401k or your IRA, um, you know, backed by gold and silver and to kind of diversify in that way because it protects everything else you have. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's um, so not all of your investments are going to go up at the same time. You might have three that are up and one that's down. And maybe that one that's down is going to be your gold and silver. But when the other three are down, the one that's up is probably going to be the gold and silver. OK, last question we'll take from Mari A. Uh, from Mari A. How much are the silver dimes with with the wreaths on it worth? Thank you. Um, those if they're 1964 and before, they're worth about 60 cents each. Yeah, 60 cents okay. each, which is good. Okay, wonderful. And our info, we have put it up there for you. Andrew's email, the 1866 number, and the website, bh-pm.com. Andrew, any last words before we close today? Well, this this has been a really fun interview. It's like um, I always love the questions, but the questions today were were especially good. Yeah, and um, they are. Yeah. And it's really um I'm someone that, that believes what I'm talking about. Um, the enthusiasm, enthusiasm that I have right now is, is at the highest level I've seen since like 2011, because the very thing that we've been talking about here for so long is happening and unfolding uh, right before our eyes. I mean, we're going to see $2,500 gold very soon. Mm -hmm. it, it'll prob I know I'll be back uh, on with you either next week or the week after. Yeah. It'll probably be over $2,400 at that time. 
it and, might be. And we don't know. Will silver be over 30? We'll see. But well, it's, it's an exciting time and it's they're moving in the right direction. And in these two windows, I'm curious to see if it hits in these two windows. I was been talking about the 39 day window. We're in between Purim and Passover and the 50 day window from Passover to Shavuot uh, or Pentecost. So I'm very curious to see if it hits. And the reason why we have you ask these questions to Andrew is so you get to hear from Andrew yourself, his response. And you get comfortable with Andrew because nobody's trying to fear monger you here. We want you to hear answers to your questions so you can make informed decisions about what you have to steward over. And this is why we do it this way. And Andrew actually loves doing it this way because he tells me all the time um, when we talk how much he loves that our viewers get to ask their questions to him and he gets to answer them. Absolutely. It's, um, I get these texts with the same questions every single day. So to be able to um, communicate those answers to so many people at the same time is the absolute best. It does help. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. And I, I can't wait to see where we're at next time we talk. I, I'm looking very forward to that. I want to see. I'm very curious myself. So Andrew will be back on a week and a half or so. He'll be back, but we'll see where the market is at by then. We could have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. And I'll see you then. Thank you, Andrew. Thank And you can reach Andrew by going uh, to bh-pm.com. We also have his email across the screen, as well as the 1866 number. Um, so please reach out to Andrew. Uh, you can tell him either Ark of Grace or Amanda Grace. You saw him here. Um, and he loves coming on and answering your questions. He really does because he gets to connect with you. He gets to answer himself and you get to get answers to your questions without any pressure whatsoever. And Andrew likes that very much because him and his team care very much about their clients. Um, and so we love it when he gets to come on and, and he gets to uh, connect with our audience. And he tells me our audience asks some of the best questions that he gets. So kudos to you guys for the, for the questions that you give because you give some of the best questions uh, that Andrew gets. So we appreciate everybody tuning in today across all platforms. Mark your calendars for tomorrow because most likely we are going to be going live. There is some stuff to talk about that is happening um, and dots to connect here uh, that are going to add even more of a picture to what we have already seen happen in this 39 day window we have been in between Purim and Passover uh, and with the solar eclipse happening on Monday, as well as a few uh, other uh, planetary events that have happened and are going to still happen within this window. But there's also some other things we have to go over. So we will announce, but mark your calendars for tomorrow. We will be going live. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Andrew's information is going to be in as well, the commercials that we will run uh, when I'm done in just a few moments here. But I encourage all of you to armor up. Keep the faith, armor up according to Ephesians chapter six, Psalm 91. I say it every single day. I encourage you to say it. There is something to Psalm 91. And hopefully, I'm hoping to get into it within the next couple of weeks. But there's something to this specific Psalm that connects to the New Testament in a way that is pretty fascinating. So I'm hoping to get into it over the next couple of weeks, but I encourage you, Psalm 91, Ephesians chapter 1 and 3, not only to read them, but there are scriptures from the Believer's Authority by Kenneth Hagin. There are specific scriptures in those chapters that I say every single day uh, because the Word is living and active and we have to activate it. Um, I would also encourage you to go to the Word um, and and look at how Jesus talks about the parable with the talents, uh, the parable of how uh, three different men were given three different talents and the talent was a coin, I believe, back then. But I would go look that up and read that uh, because there's a lot of wisdom in that as well. We have to be good stewards over what God has given us. And sometimes the Lord allows us to learn not gain knowledge and gain wisdom before he gives us more to steward over. So that's why I think it's important sometimes when people say, well, I'm watching this and I don't have anything to, but well, 
but you may because the Lord may be wanting you to learn and gain wisdom and gain knowledge because he's about to give you more to handle and he wants you to understand um, in using wisdom what to do with it um, for his glory, including being a cheerful giver. So I just wanted to end with that thought today. We'll see you back on tomorrow. Um, we love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing you again. So look for the announcement and we will be back on probably tomorrow about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue. It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts. Go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to mypillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs in our animal sanctuary, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yeah. and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out and wow he's boom and he got power i said no way and i don't know i said amanda what what did you do to him to <laughs> <laughs> so it's good